Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the class. This is David A. Cox with PCClassesOnline.com, and today we are going to be talking about video editing using the software uh, iMovie, which comes, of course, with every Mac. This is the 2011 version of uh, iMovie, which is the most recent version. And uh, we're going to be going over everything today from how to edit, importing footage, adding music, narration, titles, transitions, pretty much the whole nine yards. We're also going to go into uh, how to share your project when you're done with it to something like YouTube or Vimeo or even if you want to burn it to a DVD. Um, now, I taught this class this morning. One of the things that um, a couple of people had mentioned in the questions and I said in the middle of it is that I think we're going to do a class on making a DVD um, later on, probably sometime in April. Um, but it's actually very simple. So, but this is going to be the part where we're going to focus on the editing portion of it. So we're not we're going to be creating a video here. It's not going to have any real content. It's not like an actual video that I'm working on. Um, but um, I just got back from a amazing trip uh, to an island known as Dry Tortugas, and it's a uh, basically a three hour boat ride from Key West, and it is one of the most beautiful places that I have ever visited. And when you see the footage, you'll see the reason why. So um, we're going to be creating like a little fake movie, like a sort of like a slideshow kind of thing, uh, documenting the trip with music and narration. And um, through that, hopefully you'll all learn. So um, when you first open up iMovie, if it's the first time you've ever opened it, um, you're going to probably see this screen right here. So this is the new project window. And we're going to first thing we're going to do is title our project. So I'm just going to call this my dummy project key west so from there you're gonna start to decide what aspect ratio do you want now if you want it to look really really good and I suspect all of you do I strongly recommend that you do widescreen that'll be a 16 by 9 ratio if you do 4 by 3 that's sort of like a box um, but widescreen tends to always look better then there's frame rate so frame rate is just you know how quickly do the frames go across the screen and while you might think that the faster it is, the better it will look, it's actually the opposite. Um, and the, the easiest way for me to describe it is if you look at a soap opera and you compare it to something like a movie, they have a very different look, but people have trouble trying to figure out what is the difference. Well, soap operas are typically shot at 30 frames per second, whereas a lot of the movies that, well, all the movies that you see are shot at 24 frames per second. 24 frames is more cinematic um, it's going to end up looking more professional. At least that's how our brains associate professional. Uh, is It's actually slower. Um, and if you're from the UK uh, or over in Europe, 25 frames per second is the standard over there. So we'll do 24. Now, there's a couple of other options here that you can choose to explore if you like. I'm not going to do any of them. But um, if you want to have transitions automatically added between every single item, you can check this box right here and all your different types of transitions you have right here from cross dissolve to cross blur, etc. Um, and then up here at the top left, we have the different project themes. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me um, let me change. When I'm done with this, I'm going to change the resolution of the screen so that all of you can see it just a little bit better. Um, so a project theme basically means that when you go to use a transition, for example, um, you go between shots it can look like it's part of, it can have a theme to it. So whether you decide to do a newscast theme or a sports clip, you know, which will make it look like it's part of a sports show, comic book, Bolton board, photo album. Um, they're kind of funky. If it's a like a family vacation, for example, a uh, photo album and scrapbook are both pretty fun. Uh, it definitely gives it a personality. Um, the other thing it can do is it can become really annoying after a while um, if you start to overuse it. Um, now, the bottom part here, uh, I want to do a class on this summer um, because I'll have a lot better access to footage and uh, to, to do a class on creating a movie trailer is actually a lot of work because we have to go out and actually shoot the footage that you would see and um, you need a lot of video and uh, a lot of different clips. So you can basically, through this, what this essentially is right here is a template. So if you want your home movies to look like a movie, like an actual movie coming out soon in theaters, uh, you can use one of these templates and they have all the different themes from action, adventure, blockbuster, documentary. 
And what it will do is for each clip, it's going to ask you, okay, give me a clip with two people. Give me a clip of someone running. Give me a clip of a landscape, something like that. And it's going to kind of, when you're done, it's going to add the music. It's going to add the transitions on its own. And it's going to become something you'll laugh at for quite a long time. So right now we're just going to do no theme here because it's just clean. And so the first thing I want to do, uh, actually technically the first thing I want to do is adjust the resolution of my screen so that you all can see this a little bit better. Display, scaled, and I believe, I think this is what we were doing. No, it's not. That's what we were doing. Okay. All righty. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go over what these different buttons accomplish, and then we'll start to dive into the actual project itself. Okay, so we're going to start here on the left. Uh, actually, you know what? Before we even go there, let's talk about the different boxes. So you have a total of three different boxes here. You have this upper left-hand quadrant, uh, you have the upper right, and then you have this whole piece here on the bottom. If this is the very first time you're using iMovie, it probably looks something like this. It looks like this box and this box are reversed. I just reversed them now. Um, and so what I recommend that you do is you hit this little icon right here with these two arrows to change them. The idea is this. Your project space, where the actual edit is going to take place, is down here at the very bottom. Okay, That is what you need the most space for. Okay, This box up here at the top right is your preview window. So whatever footage you're scrolling over, that's where you're going to see the, the preview of what it is. The event library here, you're only going to use if you're actually using video or if you have a video camera connected to your computer. Okay, So not all of you are necessarily going to use this, um, but that's where your footage would be if you're uh, connecting in like a camera, that kind of thing. It's also where you'll find access to footage from any past videos that you may have created. So, that being said, let's go over the buttons. The first one is over here on the left. It looks like a video camera, and you guessed it, it is for if you have connected your video camera. Basically, uh, if you need to import footage, uh, you'll click through this button. I do not have a camera connected, hence why it's saying no camera. And it will walk you through importing all your footage. Typically, it's the kind of thing where you just kind of hit start, and when you're done, you hit end, and voila, you'll have your footage over up here in the top left. The next button we already went over, that's just to reverse these two windows. You really do want your project space to be on the bottom. Okay. Next you'll see a little scroll bar here. And um, this is going to, personally I like my, um, this is going to change the size of your little thumbnails. So personally I like them to be larger um, so I can see what the footage is that I'm working with. Um, but if you have really, really good vision, you may want to keep it on the lower end. But for this purpose, we're going to keep it high. Now, some of these icons you see over here um, are part of the advanced settings. Uh, to, in, to enable the advanced settings, all you have to do is click on where it says iMovie up here at the top, go to Preferences, and it'll say Show Advanced Settings. We're not going over advanced stuff today, so I'm going to actually disable that. Um, examples of things that you can do in the advanced mode are green screen, also known as chroma key. So for example, if you want to make it look like you're directing the news, uh, you can have a green screen behind you. It can be fabric. It can be just a wall painted one color. It doesn't actually have to be green. As long as it's a solid color and you want to make sure that the person standing in front of it is not wearing that color for obvious reasons, it will then delete that color and you can put your footage in the background. So it looks like you're, you know, doing the news or whatever. Um, so we're going to start over here, basically. So these three buttons here, there's only one that you're going to probably need, which is the microphone icon. And the microphone icon, what it does is it is for voiceover work. Uh, if you decide you want to have narration, I do strongly recommend getting an external microphone. Um, the one that I use for all of these classes and all of the voiceover work that I've ever done uh, is a device called the um, uh, the Blue. It's The company is Blue. That's the name of the audio company. And the microphone is called the Snowball. And it's a really handy mic, um, and it records fabulously, as you can all tell. Um, and it's about 100 bucks. The next 
right here, this is the universal symbol for crop, in case you didn't know. And so if you need to crop your footage, uh, rotate it, or if you want to add a effect, which we'll be using later, called the Ken Burns effect, uh, this is what you're going to click on. Um, there's another way to do it, though, where we won't, we won't really need this. We're going to bypass it. The I, um, as with all the different Mac applications, the little bit lowercase I is referred to as the inspector. And it's to get additional information on whatever you're clicked on. Uh, we're not going to need it so much during this, um, but it's there if you do need it. And these are the big tools over here on the right-hand side. So the first thing we're going to start with today is music, okay? You want to have background music. And uh, you can get your music, of course, from iTunes, or if you have it on a CD, you can import it that way into iTunes. Um, and so you, all you do is click on this music note. You'll see all the different sources that you have for music. Of course, you have iTunes. Now, if you're really good at composing, you can do GarageBand and compose your own music. Um, and uh, so you can kind of go through here and uh, pick out whatever you want. I have one that I'm going to use, which I just imported. Uh, there it is here. So this is the karaoke version of the song Home by Philip Phillips. So one of the themes that you're going to see with iMovie here is a very, very simple process. It's used in all the different Mac applications known as drag and drop. So when you have content right here and you want it to be in your project, all you have to do is click it, drag it, and drop it here. Now the reason why it's only this little icon right here is because we don't have any footage right now. So I can't really play it because there's nothing there. But that's going to change as soon as we add content, which is what we're going to do now. So here where you see the camera icon, this is what connects in to your iPhoto library. Okay, so anything you have in here, whether and you can organize it however you want, whether you want to do it through events or photos, it doesn't really matter at all. Okay, you can go through last imported. Now, I just before this class imported all this footage from this trip that I just took. So if you want to use everything, of course, one of the little key commands that we've gone over before is select all. So to select all, you're going to hold the command key on your keyboard and tap the letter A. Now, likewise, if you only wanted to add a few photos here, you could just drag and drop as many as you want into your little project space. Okay? So here we go, and it's going to uh, add them all. Now, by default, it's going to add an effect to all these photos known as the Ken Burns effect. Hopefully, you all know who Ken Burns is. He's a, a multi-award winning documentary filmmaker, and uh, his all of his films kind of work the same way. They're made up of photos, and what he'll do is start, for example, wide on an image and then slowly zoom in on the subject, okay, and he'll pan across the image. And it, while he's doing this, he has narration, he has music, and it ends up giving it a personality. Okay, so you can see here, if I just hit play, you know, we'll get there in a minute, not, not quite. Now the next button right here is this little T, and the T stands for titles. So sometimes when you're opening up your video, or in the middle of it, or at the end, whatever you want, uh, you want to have some sort of a text, whether it's to give... Um, the name of the project, or maybe some sort of a subtitle, um, or just a little comment on the side. Here's how you do it. There's a couple different ways you can work this. So you can have titles here. Some of them are animated. Some of them are static. Okay. If you put your cursor over any of them, you'll see the ones that are animated. You can actually see a little preview of what they look like. Okay. Now you can have these layered on top of the video foot on top of your. Uh, footage, whether it's photo or video, doesn't matter. Or you can have a background, and here's how you do it. So let's say I'm going to use the centered one right here. It's a very, very basic title. Okay. If I want it to be on top of the footage, all I have to do is drag it and drop it on top. And you can actually see now that that clip is highlighted. It's blue. And if I let go, now you can see that there's title text right here on top of the image. And all you have to do is type in whatever you want. So I can say, uh, our trip to dry tortugas. OK? And if you want to add in another line, just like you would if you were typing a document, you just hit Enter with David, Sean, Tim, and Andrew. OK. Now, 
Sometimes you may not want this kind of a font. So one of the things you can do is click up here at the top where it says show fonts. And you can either use these fonts here which come with, uh, they come built in as kind of as the default fonts. Or if you want, you can add your own. To add your own, just click here where it says system font panel and you can just click and add whatever you want. Okay. So when you pick the one that you, the font that you want, let's just do um, let's just do Helvetica New, okay. Next, you're going to choose what color you want, okay. I'm going to do white in this case, and finally we have the size. So you can see here as I scroll over the larger sizes, it increases the font. So I'm going to go down here, down to three. All right, hit done, and there that is. Now the other option. I'm going to delete that now. Is you can have it be its own independent clip. So you can have it so that before the even footage starts coming in, I can have it over a black background or even something a little bit more interesting, a little more animated, something like that. So um, for that, let's say I want to do, uh, let's do, this one's kind of funky, four corners, okay? So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to drag it, but this time instead of dropping it onto the clip, I'm going to drag it before the clip. Now you see that little um, neon green bar that appeared? When you see that bar, it means that you're about to make it an independent clip. And at that point, it's going to say, what kind of a background do you want? Now these ones, uh, some of the ones up here that you see, uh, just really the top row, these are all animated. Okay, so with this blobs one, the blobs in the background you see are moving around with underwater. You know, you see like the light patterns, you see the water moving. Um, or you can have just a background, whether you want stars, industrial, or just a plain color. Okay, so for this one, because it's, after all, it's Key West, I'll do underwater. Okay, so now I just type in my text, whatever I want, and it's going to create that as a, as a title. Um, Finally, one other trick I want to show you that you can do is you can choose to do something. This is my favorite type of title here. It's called pull focus. Okay. And what I love is when you start off on an image, you know, something like this, and it opens to the image, and then you see the title on top of it, and then the title f fades away and you resume the movie. So, the way you do this is you're going to take that and you're going to drop it on just like we did before. But this time, you see this like sort of um, bluish grayish bar that's now on top? If you put your cursor at either corner, okay, Let's see if I can get it just right, you can drag it in. Okay. You can also, if you want to pull, uh, click in the middle, you can drag it over. So by doing this, what you're doing is you're short, you're letting your clip show in the beginning, and then you have your title come in, and then your title goes out. Okay. So watch this. This is how it looks right now. I know that was a very short clip, so I didn't really have time to work, but that's my personal favorite type of title to do. Okay. So let's delete that out for now. Actually, you know what? Let's uh, yeah, let's let's leave that for now. We're gonna move on to some of the other categories here. The next one here is this icon. It looks like two triangles. Um, I, I always try to figure out what they're really going for with that. I always thought it looked like a curtain. Um, but this is transitions. Okay, I think of a curtain when I think of a transition. I don't know why. So when you're going between shots. Okay, instead of just cutting, sometimes it's nice to do something uh, like a cross blur or a cross dissolve. You can see here if I, once again, if I put my cursor and I just let it sit on top of it, I'll see what the actual effect is. So we have fade to black, and then you get some more funky ones down here like cube, mosaic, different wipes, okay. The one word of caution with using these funky ones is they can get to be pretty annoying after a while. So if you're going to do them, that's fine. Just keep it a little subtle. Don't don't do it for every single different one. So now what we're going to do, if we want to create a transition, 
Let's say I want to transition between this shot and this shot. What I can do is take cross dissolve right here and drag it and drop it between the two clips. And once again, you see that little neon green bar shows up. Now, the default amount of time that it takes to transition, if you put your cursor over it, you'll see here it's 0.5 seconds. You can tweak that. And I'm going to show you in a little bit how to do that. Finally, the last one, which I think is kind of silly. Some people like it, some people don't. If you're doing a travel video, yeah, it is kind of cool for that. Otherwise, not many of you are going to actually use this. This is the globe effect, okay, maps. So what this is meant to show is you start off at one location, it has a, you know, kind of an arrow, and you go towards another location, and it's just a way to show that you're traveling. So the way you do this is you take whichever map you decide you want here. I'll just do uh, Old World Globe as an example. Once again, you drag it to where you want it. And it's just going to ask you, where is your starting point? Where is your ending point? And it's taking its time right now for whatever reason. Okay. And so it's saying, okay, where is your start location? In this case, it thinks Key West is the starter. Uh, I'm not going to actually do this. Well, I might as well. Let's just pick one here. Let's just say I start in New Zealand and I end up in Key West. You can also type it in. Okay. You can have it zoom in if you want. There's a couple little options here. All right. So now when I hit play, okay, so that's what it did. If you ever want to delete a clip, it's really easy. You see the clip over here? Just click on it and hit delete. That is it. So uh, that's the globe part. Now at this point, what I want to do is uh, I want to show you, um, before we get into editing, one other little feature here. You see how there's these little boxes down here? These are all just kind of keyframes and showing you what the shot looks like at this time period. If you're working with a big project, if it's longer, you don't want it to be, this right here only represents a total of four seconds. Okay? So one of the things you can do is if you look down here at the very, very bottom of my screen, you'll see there is a slide bar here. Now by default, it's actually set to five seconds, I believe. Um, but what you can do here is you can make it, you can make it as whatever you want, really. So if you want each box to represent one second or even one half of one second, you can do that or you can make it as much as you want. In this case, I'm going to leave it at five. Okay, that way I have a little bit more room to play with here. All right. Um, the other thing I do want to mention is playing. Okay, so you see here as I move my cursor, it does show me in the preview window kind of what area I'm going over. But if you want to play, all you have to do, and it actually just set it conveniently on my screen, you just put the cursor wherever you want it to be and hit the space bar. Now let's start to get a little bit into editing. All right. So I've showed you the transitions part, I showed you the titles part, but now you might want to make some sort of a tweak to it. So let's start here, let's start with this very first shot. You see how the shot kind of starts up a little bit, and as it progresses, it kind of goes down into the right? Well, I don't really want that direction, I want to be able to tweak exactly how it looks. Here's how you do it. One of the things you'll notice on your Mac is that usually a lot of things work very consistently across the different applications. So for example, when you're in your computer and you want to change the settings to something, it is almost always represented by a gear icon. So in this case here, I want to modify this clip. You'll notice that as I put my cursor over it, there is a gear that appears at the bottom left. If I want to tweak the song, this green bar here is the song. There's a gear at the top left. If I want to tweak the transition, there's a gear that appears on the transition. This is how you change the settings for everything. Okay? So for this shot, okay, it's added the Ken Burns effect automatically, but it didn't add it in the way that I want it to look. So we click on the gear, and we get a total of four different options here. 
precision editor, clip adjustments, video adjustments, and cropping kin burns and rotation. Okay, so let's start off with let's actually start off with the um, precision editor, and to to show that I'm gonna actually go to the audio here, um, which is the equivalent of clip trimmer. So what this is going to do is, if you look up here at the top left, this is a visual representation of the song. Okay, so it's showing the different peaks and lows of the song. So let's say I don't want it to start, there's like this little gap here of silence. Okay, so it doesn't start right away. What I can do is take this little yellow bar here and drag it in. And if I leave it like that and I click done, it's going to trim the clip. That's basically all that is. Okay. And the same applies to video. If you shot a video and you want to start in a little bit later, you do the same thing. It's just, it's just video. Um, clip adjustments. Okay. Now the clip adjustments uh, is where you can add different effects to your videos. And in the case of a photo, you can change the duration. Okay. So currently this photo is only 3.7 seconds long. The reason why it's not four is because of the transition is taking up part of that time. So if we want to kind of, you know, play this out, we don't want it to be so fast. Let's change it to eight seconds. Okay. Watch out for this box right here. If you have this box checked, every single image is going to become eight seconds long. Hit done. Okay. So now you can see it's going to be a lot more of a smooth transition. The other thing you can do is you can add effects. Okay, now once again, these can get really cheesy if you use them too much. So just watch out for that. And all you have to do is roll your cursor over these and you'll see how they look in real time. So for example, you can make it look kind of cartoony. Day into night makes it look a little bit like dusk. If you've noticed when you're watching like a television show and they're trying to show that something is nighttime, all it really does usually is they're actually shooting it in daytime. They just add a layer of dark blue over it, and it makes it look like it's night. Um, at least some of the cheesy shows do that. Film grain makes it look like you've got some grain here. Aged film. Glow. Okay. All sorts of different ones that you can try out here. And all you have to do is click on them, and it's instantly applied. One of the things I love about this feature, though, is that if you, for those of you who have ever used Final Cut Pro or something like that, to add an effect to video, usually you have to go through a process called rendering. So it's got to process that effect on the whole clip, which takes usually a couple, could be a couple seconds, could be a couple minutes. So with this, it is instantly rendered. There is no process that you have to go through. I'm going to hit cancel here because I like it the way it is. And now let's go over some of the other effects so you can go here. So the next one is video adjustments. Now this is if you're kind of a little bit more in the pro area, but you can adjust the uh, information about the, um, you can adjust the look of it. You can tweak the exposure, the brightness, contrast, saturation, even the white balance. Okay, so to do this, you just take these little slide bars and you can tweak them however you want. All right, I've already kind of color corrected this, so it's already, Pretty much where it should be. If I want to really up the intensity, you know, you can just add a little saturation to your clip. And finally, we have cropping, Ken Burns, and rotation. Okay, so there's a couple different options here. At the very top, you'll see here we have fit, crop, and Ken Burns. So let's start with fit. Um, we don't really need to do anything with fit because it is fitted. Um, what that will basically do is it'll just kind of make it, it'll take the image and it'll crunch it so that it fits. On the screen. Uh, it's especially if you have a huge image, something like a panorama. Crop uh, will basically cut down these black bars here, as an example, um, but it will still just be a still image. There will be no movement if you use crop. Um, crop can be good on video if, let's say, you're trying to shoot a commercial and the guy who's doing this, the boom mic accidentally gets the boom into the shot, you can just crop it out a little bit. And then, of course, we get to Ken Burns. So here's how the Ken Burns effect works. And actually, you know what? I want to really show you how to use this on a panorama. So this here is a panorama shot, okay? 
So what's kind of fun if you know how to shoot panoramas or photo stitching, uh, this is actually a stitch, sorry, um, is you can start your video at one end of the clip and end at the other end of the clip. And as long as you take your time, uh, it looks great. It's a pretty cool effect to do. I've done this in a film that I shot two years ago. So for this, you have two boxes. You have a green box and you have a red box. Whatever's in the green box is your starting, and whatever's in the red is your ending position. One of the things to be careful with this is if you're doing a big movement, like this right here is considered a big movement because it's going all the way from over here to all the way over here. Okay, let's actually make that full, just like that. Okay, so watch, watch how it looks right now. Okay, in only four seconds, it has a long way to travel. Okay, so one thing you can do if you're going to be doing this to something like a panorama, you're going to want to use that clip adjustment and make it longer. Okay, so just by doubling the length of it, watch how it's a little bit more relaxed now. You might even want to go more than that in this case. Um, in the case where you have people, okay, so like, let's use this shot here, okay. When you're doing people, one of the tips I'd give you with the Ken Burns effect is to be really subtle. So you can see here that right now the distance be the, between the red box and the green box, it's really, really minimal, okay. You don't need a lot of movement to create that kind of effect. So just by having that little hair difference right there, it's still going to look great. Watch this. See, it doesn't quite look still, but it's, uh, there's me. It doesn't quite look still, but it gives it a little bit of a pop of personality. Okay? That's how you do the Ken Burns effect. Next thing is, sometimes you want to just swap these clips. Okay? So, for example, back over here, you know, we had, these two shots are almost identical. So if you want to swap them out, if you want to move this one maybe somewhere else down the road, you can, just like we did before, just drag it and drop it. And you see that green bar comes back? So as you drag over to the right, the screen is just going to keep continuing on. And it's going to show you where your end image is. Okay? Just like that. All right. Next thing we're going to talk about is adding, uh, let's see, we covered, I want to make sure I covered all that. Yes, we did. We covered all three of those. And remember, if you have any questions during the course of this class, you can always uh, type in your little question box. We have plenty of time today, so we'll go over everything at the end. Now, the next step is to add something like a narration. Uh, as I said, I do recommend having a professional mic. You can use the one on your computer. It's just not going to sound great. So, from here, you're going to click on this little microphone icon right here. Now, these are your settings, so you want to make sure that it's on the right microphone. And as you just uh, launch this, you're going to want to start talking like I am right now. And you can see here that there's a visual representation of my voice. And right now, it's all in green, and green is good. If you, let's move this up a little bit so you can see what happens. If you start to hit a lot of red and yellow, okay, it means you're just, you're too loud. So what you can do is just tweak this, bring it down to the point where you're in the green territory, all right, and that way it's going to sound really balanced when you're done. What I love about adding a voiceover is that iMovie automatically is going to take that music in the background and it's going to fade it down very gently. It's going to fade my voice in uh, over the course of three seconds. And uh, when I'm done, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to reverse it. It's going to fade my voice down and it's going to fade back up the music. Okay, so it doesn't sound sudden. The other things you have here as an option, you have noise reduction, okay? Uh, so this is, for example, if you have an air conditioner going in the background or some sort of a humming noise more than anything. Voice enhancement. If you have a deep voice, um, this can be kind of what makes your difference. That it's, it makes the difference between you just sounding like you and sounding like the golden version of you. Um, so voice enhancement will just kind of, it makes it more crisp. And I don't know a better way to express it other than to say that. Finally, over here we have Play Project Audio While Recording. Well, 
this is not for everyone. If you, uh, first of all, if you use this, if you decide to use this option, you must be using headphones because if you are speaking narration while your computer is playing the audio through the speakers, the microphone's going to pick up on it and you're going to have this weird echo. So make sure you have headphones if you decide to use this or just don't use it. So because I don't have headphones on right now, I'm going to leave that off. Now when you want to actually add your voiceover to the clip, all you have to do is put your cursor where you want to come in. So um, let's uh, say I want to come in right here and all I have to do is click. Now when you do that, it's going to rewind three seconds. It's going to give you a countdown, three, two, one. At that point, you can start speaking, and when you're done, hit the space bar. Okay, so let's just try a quick dummy recording session here. Here we go. In March of 2012, we decided to take a company trip to Dry Tortugas, which is three hours. Oops, sorry. You know what I did there? I, I made a mistake, but it's good because... Now you won't. My mistake was that I had highlighted just the clip. See how the clip is yellow right here? Don't want to do that. You want to just click. See how I see I clicked out? It's no longer highlighted. You want to just click right here. Okay. Let's try that again. Take two. In March of 2012, we decided to take a company trip to the island of Dry Tortugas, which is a three hour boat ride off the coast of Key West, Florida. Okay, so I did my quick voiceover. Now if you want to play it, you can just put your cursor wherever you want, hit the space bar, and see how it sounds. In March of 2012, we decided to take a company trip to the okay, island so of Dry Tortugas, when you're done, which is a three-hour boat ride right here off the coast of Key out West, Florida. Florida. And you're done with that part. Okay, so we've gone over a lot already so far. Uh, next thing I want to do is I want to talk about what do you do when you're done. You've got your project. You're finished. You want to now get it out there and share it with the world. Well, depending on what you want to do with it, here's how you do it. At the top where you see your little menu here, okay, where you have your file, edit, view, all that jazz, here under the share menu, we have several options, one of which is oddly repeated, and I haven't figured out the reason why they do it. Media browser will let you basically choose um, what is this going to be going towards. If it's going to be just viewed on something like an iPhone, you don't really need that high resolution, um, although honestly, at this resolution here, on a newer iPhone, it won't look great. So you may not want mobile. Most people are going to be between large uh, HD 10, uh, 720p and HD at 1080p. This is technically considered high definition at 1080p. Okay, It's also going to be a larger file, obviously, um, but that's where you can choose that. If you just want to have it as a file, this is where you go. The other options you have here you can send it to iTunes. Uh, if you want to send it to iTunes, it's great if you have an Apple t uh, Apple TV. That way you can just, boom, log into it, access it through Apple TV, and you're good to go. Um, iDVD here is the one that we're going to be doing a class on soon. I think there's actually a past class of it in the video library, although I could be wrong about that. Um, and iDVD comes with your computer, and it allows you to burn a DVD with menus, and uh, it's kind of a fun thing. Uh, I like to teach this class usually around uh, Christmas time because it's a fun present to give out to your friends and family, but we'll try to do a class on iDVD in the month of April. Next, we have YouTube. Okay, so if you have an account with YouTube, you can go straight from iMovie into YouTube without ever having to leave your project file. Same goes true for Facebook and Vimeo. Okay, uh, CNN, I report. I have actually been on CNN through, because of this. Um, about two years ago, I was shooting time-lapse photography of a hurricane, and uh, Wolf Blitzer picked it up, and uh, I published it through the iReport app, just like you see here, and uh, I got a call from their producer saying they wanted to use the footage, and uh, it was kind of cool say I've been on CNN. Export movie here. 
uh, is uh, I feel like it's the exact same thing as Media Browser, and I, I don't really understand the actual difference here. As you can see here, it's the exact same screen. Um, I could be wrong, but what I believe the actual difference is is that with Media Browser, you can export it as multiple types, whereas with this, it's only one. Um, so most people are not going to be really needing that. Export using QuickTime will allow you to tweak a lot of uh, individual settings here. So for example, if you want your um, video to be an AVI file, you can actually change what format it is uh, versus an MPEG-4. Okay, uh, Here under Options, you can change things like what kind of compression you use. Um, the only real thing you need to know about compression here, let's go to Settings. It's pretty simple. Um, frame rate should always be current. Keyframes, I do every 24 frames. Okay. Quality, I always have it at the best. But that's just me personally. It depends on what you're ultimately doing with your video. Now, this is the big one right here. Compression type. There's a lot of options here. And a lot of people just have no idea what is the best one. H.264 is kind of right now the standard. It's a very good compression type. It will get your file so that it's not outrageously huge, but make it maintain good quality. Um, it's what's kind of standard in the film industry these days, so I do recommend it. Not all of you are going to need to access this menu, though. Okay. Uh, was there anything else there that I left out? Uh, Final Cut XML is only if you're using Final Cut. If you're using Final Cut, well, then you're using Final Cut. You're not using iMovie. <laughs> so I don't know why anyone actually needs this. Um, if you have already published a video to YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, whatever, you can use this to take it down at the very bottom. Remove from. Okay. And that is that. So at this point, what I would like to do is I'd like to um, take questions from those of you who are here. Um, for those of you who are watching this video on the web, I thank you for joining us. hope you'll check out our other videos, of course. Remember, we do take recommendations, uh, suggestions very seriously. So you can always email us, david at pcclassesonline.com. And um, so let's, let's wrap this one up, and we'll get to all of you here who are here live.